So it's uh, Belisi and Lenny. Um, we're talking about Unit 11 in uh, Hanson and Quinn. Um, we This is the oops video, okay? <laughs> the one in which we realized afterwards that we missed um, two things, namely the second aorist imperatives. Um, are, we still have only, well, no, actually in this lesson we get a new one, I think. One second aorist verb, which is lapo. And you remember that his second aorist is elipon, that's the third principal part. That aorist is elipon, where we change the stem vowel from an e, L-E-I-P becomes L-I-P. So what do you do for imperatives of, of these um, both active and middle passive? The middle, rather. Mm -hmm. The passive is separate in the aorist. Um, the, um, the active imperative is the same as the present imperative. So it's lipa lipeto for the second and the third persons, and um, lipata and liponto, those are the singular, first and second, second and third singular, and for the second and third plural, lipata and liponto. In the middle, it's it's the same, it's lipu and lipeslo, and it is, it's also the present. Um, imperative endings. The pu is a circumflex, I think, over the OU. Yeah. And the pesto. Mm -hmm. um, and lipata and the pesto. The pesto, is that right? Yes, it's the pesto. Yep. Pretty sure. Let me check to make sure. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, the one thing that's important to know is that there is a small group of very old um, secondarist verbs, we haven't had very many of them, that have a funny accent, that have an accent on the epsilon. Um, there's uh, the, the, the verb to take, which I guess we haven't had yet, lambano has a, a second singular imperative, la be, which is the older form. You may, you may remember that there are some the second aorist forms which keep the accent on the thematic vowel, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so it reflects a very old tradition. So there's Yehurat, Yedem, Yabeh, and a couple of others that preserve an, an ancient accentuation pattern. But that's not a mistake when you, when you see it. All right? Mm -hmm.